Welcome back. If you just joined us to watch the news at 10, live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Ogun State Police Command arrests three suspects over the murder of 22-year-old final year student of the Lagos State University. SERAP, Budget and other civil society organizations file suit to stop the federal government from releasing 37 billion naira budgeted for the renovation of the National Assembly complex. And Australia authorities warn residents and holidaymakers in Victoria's state to evacuate because of the worsening spate of bushfire. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. YouTube.com slash channels web has videos of our shows. A coalition of civil rights groups and some concerned Nigerians have filed a lawsuit asking the Federal High Court Abuja to stop President Mahmoud Buhari and the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, from releasing 37 billion naira allocated for the renovation of the National Assembly complex. The groups are also seeking court order to restrain and stop the Senate President, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the Federal Capital Development Agency from demanding or collecting the money until an impact assessment of the spending is carried out. In a statement by the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, the CSOs said, the National Assembly complex should be a safe and conducive environment for those who work there. But spending 37 billion naira to renovate the place is not commensurate with the constitutional commitments to public services and goods. Decreasing public revenues and increasing level of debts, as well as the poor economic and social realities in the country. According to them, there are more pressing issues such as poverty and the inability of many state governments to pay salaries of workers and pensions that should be given attention than spending so much on a building. As activities marking the festive period continue, various ministers of the gospel are lending their voices to issues of national interest. In exclusive interviews with Channel's television, they made references to the issue of leadership, rule of law, as well as Leah Sharibu, who is still in the hands of her abductors. Our correspondent, Chris Elems, reports. As the year 2019 winds down, various issues tear us in the face as a nation. The issue of human rights violation, as well as the cost of governance, were areas of concern, and it still is for the senior pastor of the latter Reign Assembly, Pastor Tunde Bakare. We have such an overbloated government, condoned by our constitution. What says we must have 36 commission ministers in the Federal Republic? What exactly? are they doing? If your overhead is 73% or close to that, <laughs> just to maintain the civil servants and the people in power or the people in government, then you have less than 30% <laughs> for any development or project that could affect the lives of people. Understanding that this country cannot continue this way, bleeding in every sport, there must be a reset. The abduction and subsequent release of 110 Dapchi girls by the Boko Haram group, with the exception of Leah Sharibu, leaves a sore point in the fight against insurgency. The Catholic Archbishop of the Metropolitan See, Most Reverend Adewale Martins, urges the government to do more and ensure the release of the teenager. Leah Sharibu continues to be one person who who, is, who inspires fidelity, fidelity to faith, who inspires uh, readiness to, 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 to stand for what, what you believe in. In other words, we must keep Leah Sharibu on the front burner. And secondly, our government must never forget that until she is released, the whole country is, as you might say, on tenter hooks. On his part, the senior pastor of the Covenant Christian Center, Pastor Pojo Yemadi, 
wants to see the essence of true leadership replicated in the country's political space. Our leaders have traveled globally. They have seen how um, um, governments have put in policies out of empathy for the weak that has brought about um, development within that nation. So instead of being greedy and taking things to oneself, it is better, all right, for people to and more, um, more, more intelligent politically to spend political capital to lift uh, people up into the next level. With these voices come a lot more hoping to see the dark days behind and a rainbow over the country's sky. This no doubt can only bounce off a political class devoid of selfish interest. Chris Elms, Channels Television News. For less than three days to the end of the year, many Nigerians hope that the new year will mark not just a change in calendar, but a change in security and welfare. The World Bank says that one of the ways to achieve rapid economic progress is to improve the purchasing power of individuals. How could the purchasing power of Nigerians be enhanced and what should be the focus of the government in 2020? To discuss the economic outlook for 2020 with me tonight is Babajido Gusowo, Channel TV's data and information specialist. Now, this is a new one. I'm sure you do have uh, an explanation for that sitting on the table. But let's begin with the realistic growth expectations and implications for 2020. You know what? For just three seconds, I would like everyone to focus on this and imagine what this looked like 12 months ago. Clearly, it was shorter. Mm -hmm. So how did growth happen? Was it the soil? Was it weather? Just two words, the right environment. And that's the nutrients in the soil, water, weather. And that makes us understand that growth isn't as complicated as we think it is. For growth to happen, we only need two words, the right environment. environment. And so that allows me to make two conclusions about 2020. The first is, if we do not have the right environment, there will be no growth next year. On the second hand, if we have, like this plant, the right environment, then there shall be growth in Nigeria next year. Do we have the right environment? So one of the ways to look at our environment is to understand the significance of 2019. 2019 was the beginning of the third decade in Nigeria's fourth republic. And so let's review the performance of the previous two decades, 1999 to 2009. Then we'll look at 2009 to 2018, and then we'll be able to make forecasts about what to expect. And if we clearly look at that, between 1999 to 2018, the first decade, we can see the sort of growth numbers that we had. In 2002, for instance, we had a 15% growth rate. Now let's focus on the second decade, 2009 to 2018. And we see that even in the second decade, in 2012 or in 2010, for instance, we see a growth rate of 10%. What does all of this mean? It means that in the first decade of the Fourth Republic was when we had our fastest growth. In the second decade was when we had our second fastest growth. But what has happened since the beginning of the third decade, we've seen significantly slower growth rates, which means that the environment has changed. And so we need to ask ourselves the right questions. What sort of environment did we have in the first decade? And what sort of environment did we, did we have in the second decade that fast tracked that sort of growth? The challenge is some scholars believe that it was the effect of corruption that stimulated some of that growth. But again, we cannot totally say that it was just because of corruption we had those high levels of growth. It was because there were some policies and there were some reform programs that were introduced that led us to that sort of fast growth that we had in the first two decades. Now, one of the things that happened this year was an increase in minimum wage. Uh, will that have a higher impact on, uh, will that be felt, will that impact be felt in 2020? You know, I would like us uh, perhaps rephrase it in a different way, and that is, are Nigerians spending more or less? And if we look at the evidence of the past, say, half a decade, 
And if we review that and we take a careful look at that, Amachi, here's what you find. The evidence shows that Nigerians are really not spending so much money. They are not increasing their spending. And so let's look at it from 2013, for instance. In 20, between 2013 and 2014, the evidence in front of us shows that spending only increased by 1%. The subsequent year, spending as well increased by 1%. We're talking about the difficulty that families have in spending money. So 2014, families increased their spending by only 1%. In 2015, compared to 2014, they increased again by only 1%. In 2016, we see families spent less money. And the last evidence we have in 2018 shows that families only increased their spending by 5%. What does this mean? For instance, families that spent an average of 100 naira in 2017, what it means is that in 2018, they only spent 105 naira. And the significance of this is because families account for the biggest size of the economy of the country. And so when families are not spending money, then the economy will not grow. So the focus as well is for us to have that right environment. Families need to spend money. And for them to spend money, then we need to get more families employed. We need to get more individuals to be doing, involved in doing some sort of economic activity in the country. That is the secret. Mm. And hopefully these, this right environment will also provide uh, growth for businesses, uh, will also provide uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs to also increase and benefit uh, from the economy. You know, boy, in the final words, just be because that will be till 2020, 2020, the secret should be before you make yourself or before you make another person a better person, you need to first of all invest yourself and make yourself a better person, in the words of the famous Chinese actress Yao Chen. So clearly, <laughs> individuals in Nigeria need to make themselves better before they start trying to make other people better. Bajide, see you in the year 2020. And next, day, next week, I'll share some deep secrets about the economy with you Oh, too. can't wait, can't wait. Thank you. Thank you again for, for being with us on the News at 10. And when the News at 10 returns, trapped and stranded commuters and motorists lament continued gridlock on the Asaba Onisha Expressway. Do join us again.